This is a bit of an unusual thing. I was thinking about this while I was unable to talk because of the, the dialogue going on. <laughs> Usually in these kinds of games, I'm talking about the Final Fantasy games, you don't really have these kinds of situations where the, ra the tension manages to ratchet down so far as to not be in any sort of like significant peril at any point like halfway through the game this is the beginning of disc three so we're you can consider that to be about halfway through the game perhaps a, a tad more than that but this deep into the game you don't see the tension ratched down like that so it gives us an unusual view into the uh, into the way that the characters react to each other and all that kind of stuff when there isn't this higher level of tension going on. Usually you'd get like, okay, the characters would interact with each other and all that kind of stuff, but it would always be under the looming threat of whatever it is that they're trying to face off against. Now here, and this is maybe the most extreme example of this I've seen in the game, you have a situation where, as far as you can tell, with the exception of like, Kuja and all that kind of stuff, the sort of, the, the energy and all that of the storyline has sort of brought itself back down to similar to a level that we saw at the beginning of the game, when the very beginning of the game, when there wasn't a lot of, of um, like, oh shit, we're gonna die kind of stuff going on. And it's cool to see that because we have these characters who have gone through a certain level of character development. Some of them are obviously being introduced to each other for the first time, like Freya and Nico and all those, and Steiner and the and the ones that we didn't encounter until later on after we left the party. But for the most part, we have a cast of characters that know each other. We've seen through their eyes, they're experiencing each other's um, personalities and, and growing to love or hate each other or whatever that kind of stuff. The, uh, and that's something you'd expect to see this deep into the game. But we haven't seen that kind of thing like without the kind of the tension that you'd expect this far into the game. Oh, so Vivi did live in Trino. And that Manny ran into was somebody who worked on an airship that Vivi had gained passage on to get to Alexandria. That's how he got to Alexandria in the beginning of the game. I had forgotten that Vivi had um, lived 
near Trino, and I guess he picked up an airship from Trino to get to to get to Alexandria when his uh, when his grandfather died. Whoever that may be, we know um, we know Vivi to be a black mage, and he was probably created in the same fashion that the other black mages were created. But he was definitely raised by somebody we called Grandpa. Can't you at least stand by the counter, buddy? Oh, that's a lot of money. But I can afford it. I already had one of those. <laughs> Okay, so Zidane is on the way to a card tournament. Something that you wouldn't expect this far into the game, as I was rambling on about earlier. I guess if he understands that he can't really be uh, close to Dagger in any way, even though, uh, as Eco seems to point out, it's really like partially his own damn fault for trying to act like a... Trying to act like um, a badass all the time. Oh, what did I just get? I didn't read it. Hey, it's Quinna. Where the hell is Quinna been? Okay, I um 
I haven't played the card game in a while, so I can't remember if I have a good deck or not. I'm just gonna stick, uh... Wow, that is a shit card. <laughs> I've only won one game. I've, I've actually only played one game. Oh, no wonder I'm, uh... Honestly, I can't even remember if I understand the rules to this all that well. I got nothing but shit cards here. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's what I'm going to play with. Oh, man. Ah, uh, shit. I don't know if I have anything to take that out. Oh, obviously I do. Motherfucker. Well, I lost it. 